Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the very special date in the chess history because exactly 84 years ago Mikhail Tal was born. Now, for those who don't know, Mikhail Tal was the known as a magician from Riga. Uh, he was the world champion and also he was one of the sharpest chess players in the chess history. Very often he sacrificed a lot of pieces uh, for some initiative and a lot of these sacrifices were so difficult to calculate that he won a lot of games against um, very strong uh, Soviet players, against Bobby Fischer and so on. Uh, he won uh, countless, you know, games um, against also the, the lower ranked players, but he was known as the magician uh, of Riga. So I would like to pay a birthday tribute to Mikhail Tal. And if you would like to uh, support me with that, if you love the games of Mikhail Tal, please pause the video and drop the comment happy birthday Misha uh, so thank you for that if you do that you're gonna support my video as well and I would like to show you the game uh, one of the very crazy games however not the craziest not the most complicated uh, Mikhail Tal uh, games I will show that in the future on my channel however for now I would like to show you that the short games also can be very very fascinating so we Without further ado, let me introduce you the players. Mikhail Tal, an unofficial FIDE ranking, because FIDE ranking was implemented just, I think, two or three years uh, later. However, we have unofficial FIDE ranking. Mikhail Tal uh, ranking was 2590, and in this game, he's gonna play as white. And his opponent, Salnikov. We don't know the name. We don't know who this guy was. Uh, at least I, I haven't found any information about about Salnikov. We know that the game was played in 1970 uh, in Latvia, but we don't know the town or anything. If you have any information, you can also drop the comments about that. And uh, I suppose that this was one uh, of the, some of the chess exhibition, maybe, uh, maybe some town actually invited Mikhail to play some simultan games. And this was one of these games. Uh, we are not sure, however, uh, Mikhail definitely played a very happy chess here so uh, let's see what happened on the board we have e4 by Mikhail Tal e6 French defense d4 d5 knight d2 now um, Tarash variation knight f6 and now advanced variation of Tarash so e5 knight f to d7 and now bishop d3 very typical development of this bishop in the advanced variation when we see uh, this pawn structure. White want to bring the bishop to this dangerous diagonal and attack the king side of the of the black pieces. So we have c5. This is the the common theory. C3. Uh, we have knight c6. So still more and more pressure on the d4. Knight g to f3. Now defending. C takes on d4. C takes on d4. And about this position, uh, this position, of course, was reached plenty of times. It's a well-known theory. Um, F6 is one of the ideas here, and Queen B6 is the another main idea. I will just show you what's happening after Queen B6. This pawn is under attack twice, is defended once. What White usually do in this position is is castle. So White sacrificed this pawn for the development, for the safe position of the king. As uh, sometimes this knight can go to B3, and White can try to actually defend but it's uh, it's pretty uncommon uh, this is not the natural square for them for the knight so usually the castle is played and after exchanging um, all this stuff the knight jumped to f3 so there is no problem with developing the bishop uh, also this bishop on c1 there is no blocker on d2 and the queen goes back to b6 and black won one pawn however um, a lot of uh, undeveloped pieces this bishop is undeveloped this knight has still problems with developing the rook is still undeveloped uh, and this bishop uh, doesn't really have the great square so far so the engines actually estimates that the position is equal black won the pawn however white has a slightly better position uh, but in our game we had f6 so mr salnikov actually knows what he is doing this is the main idea here and we have the the two main moves one is uh, played very often uh, and this is very nice 
mage role that e takes on f6, knight takes on f6 and, and after castle, black also want to castle as fast as possible, so bishop d6, bringing the bishop to this diagonal and after b3 and castle, bishop b2, black stays with this weakness on d6 and it's not that obvious, you know, uh, if black actually pushed this pawn um, to e5, maybe not now, but if the move is well prepared, keep in mind that this pawn gonna disappear and white gonna have the very powerful pair of bishops on this diagonal. So black uh, are maybe not in the troubles, but have to play very, very precise um, in this continuation. Uh, another way of, of dealing with this position is actually again sacrificing the pawn and just, you know, castle and after exchanging most of the pieces here, uh, then bring the queen to h5 and continue from that position. Black has these two central pawns, however, at the same time, the king still stays in the center and in a couple of um, moments, the attack can be very, very strong. These are the main ideas. However, Mikhail Tal uh, starts to play the Tal moves and he played knight g5. Boom. And now uh, Mikhail Tal was known, he said the sentence about the sacrifices that there are two types of sacrifices, correct ones and mine. So uh, pretty funny, he said that, and, and in this case, actually, this sacrifice is, is just wrong, but it's not so easy to exploit. Believe me or not, 21st century, and we still have 16 games in the database where this knight g5 was played uh, on the top level. So some grandmasters still sometimes from time to time, you know, play that, uh, maybe as a home preparation, maybe not, but what black answer uh it's it's quite shocking mostly mostly black scares to actually take that that sacrifice this is the only correct move in this position uh but sometimes um, black actually takes this pawn uh, just to defend the pawn on e6 but you know out of 10 games in the database eight were won by white and um, only two draws so as you see uh, the only way to continue here is f takes on g5 and of course this is what Salnikov played. Now, how to continue the attack? Uh, as you see, this bishop, very important bishop, what is important controls the g6 square. Why it's important? Because after queen h5, which of course Mikhail Tal played, we have g6, bishop takes on g6, so very well known tactic. Uh, if you haven't known that, of course, uh, I hope you now you're gonna remember, bring the queen and together with this bishop, the attack on the position of the king can be um, devastating. H takes on g6 and now Mikhail Tal didn't take the rook. He delivers a check. Boom. So we have a check. King e7. And now look at this position. Pawn actually controls these two key squares in front of the king. And also the queen controls another squares. So everything what white has to do in this position in, is delivering a checkmate. How to do that? Uh, Mikhail Tal played knight c4, making a discovered attack on the g5. And now black has to defend somehow. How would you defend as black? There is one move which is actually winning for black, but only one. So what would you do? How would you how would you continue? Uh, the correct move in this position is actually knight d2 takes on e5 with the attack on the queen, very important, but also making a space for the king to escape and now the king can escape. So it doesn't matter if the knight takes, um, it doesn't really matter if the pawn takes, uh, the king just simply escape and that's all. Uh, black gonna stay with the with the one extra piece. If bishop takes on g5, it's gonna be very similar, king d7. Queen is under attack, but also this queen is under attack. And it doesn't matter if white actually exchange one of the pairs of the, of the knights, because at the end of the day, uh, we're gonna have bishop e7 and everything is fine. White has one extra bishop for two pawns, so uh, maybe uh, Mr. Salnikov would not win that easily against uh, Mikhail Tal. However, uh, this way is, is how, to, how to deal with this position. 
And believe me or not, but even in the 21st century, we have still one game. The player was quite st strong player, 2200 plus, uh, and he actually defended uh, the pawn um, on g5. Bishop h6, but this is losing move. This is losing move. So this is the time where you can pause the video and find the winning continuation for white. While I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So there is only one winning uh, continuation for white. All others are losing. And this is, of course, bishop g5 with check. Skewering the king. If the king moves and there is only one move uh, to f8, then, of course, the the queen is lost. Uh, if the knight goes to f6, the, the bishop gonna take and the queen is still lost. Uh, so Salnikov didn't go for these options and he pick up the, the bishop. So we have bishop g5 and now the continuation, I hope you've seen that already, is queen g7 check. And there is only one move for black. Black cannot block this check. There is only one move, king e8 and now beautiful shot Boom, knight d6, and this is the checkmate, and this is how Mikhail Tal plays chess. I hope you like this style, and again, if you enjoy this video and you would like to help me to pay the tribute, birthday tribute to Mikhail Tal, drop the comment, happy birthday, Misha, and if you like this video, press also like. If you don't like for some reason, press unlike, and if you don't want to miss other games, maybe Mikhail Tal, I will show a couple of more of Mikhail Tal games. Press subscribe, smash the bell button, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.